Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Chris Swift. Before we talk with him, let's see what's going on in the livestock market. February 184.85, that's up 22. April is trading at 186.92, that is up 20. And June is trading at 184.12, that is up 15. Going over to the feeder cattle market, we have the April. Let's go to April. Oh, March is trading 249.35, that's up 220. April is trading at 253.57, that is up 180. And the May is trading at 256.87, that's up 120. Finishing out with the hogs, we have the February market, 73.30, that's down 37 cents. And April, 80.75, that's down 40. And May is at 86.10, and that is down 12. Well, we're back with Chris Swift, uh, Swift Trading. And I just wanted to ask you, we had lows in December back, and now it rallied. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at now? Well, it's kind of interesting, Tom, because what Scott made a really good point earlier. He said, you know, we look at the corn market and we're sitting there hanging on every tick because there's really not a lot to do. We look out in the cattle market and there's all kinds of things to do, simply because of the basis spread. We've got enormous basis spreads in the feeder cattle market, not as much in the fat cattle market, but in that feeder cattle market, you have tremendous amounts of premium to work with. So we have no excuses whatsoever going forward if somebody say, well, you know, I didn't have an opportunity to market, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. that. That's all behind us now. We have every opportunity to be able to sell at prices that have never been realized before in the cash market. So there's really not a lot of excuse. The, the worst thing I think that happens is maybe you do miss out on something. You get hedged a little bit too early, maybe a little bit too late, one of the two, and you miss out on something up to the top side. But I think it's very little when you're already having 30 and $35 premiums with options, you can spread that out to 40, $45 wide, and to be able to manage that risk at the same time. A lot of people may not want to manage that risk, but if you are looking for something that's going to give you an alternative marketing venue, futures or options are it right now. Yeah, and the cattle market was, I mean, it took off. It was like really strong. The mm -hmm. hog market kind of lagged behind. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. I, I haven't really found why the hog market did what it did. It, it, it broke down out of a three month sideways trading range to the downside, false breakout came back out and took out every previous high that it had and then stopped cold in its tracks. We yeah. haven't seen it go up since. So there was a fundamental issue. Somebody caught the wrong way, whatever it was, I've yet to be able to find out why hogs had to rally eight, $9. The index rallied all of two to three. So there just wasn't that much to it. But the cattle have got all kinds of issues to them right now that we're already low on inventory. Everybody knows that. What I did notice is beef production, just not down that much. So we lose a little bit of weight week over week, but we're still way above year over year pounds on carcass weights. And we're going to continue to see that going forward because everything that the snowstorm produced is now mitigating. It's getting better and better. And hell, we're fixing to get into the spring of the year. So that's good stuff, Chris. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to say is uh, when you were like, when you give your customers advice, mm -hmm. are you involved with the options a lot? In Absolutely. That play? Yeah. Every single day. We, we look through them and we try to find uh, one thing they do. They tell us what they need. That's what we first start at. Tell us what you need. When are those cattle going to be marketed? At what time frame? And the one thing that we have really pushed hard, especially in the backgrounding operations, is try to market that physical inventory as close to the expiration of a futures contract as you can get. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to achieve full convergence of basis. That's all you're trading for to begin with. It's just what that basis spread is. So why not try to garner every single bit of it that you can and mark it right along in line with expiration. And that way, regardless of what your cattle are bringing in your area, they will be close, the, the most closely represented to the feeder cattle index at that time. I could see you're very passionate about it, Chris. <laughs> Chris Swift, extraordinaire. Thank you. With Shift, uh, Swift Trading. Swift Trading. And I'll be back in the next half hour again to update you on the commodities. And right now I'm going to turn it over to Tammy with the news.